Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar with me, Fawad Razakzada, Market Analyst with Think Markets. Um, also in the room is my colleague, Victor, um, who you may have heard has just uh, returned from holiday from Greece. <laughs> How nice. Hello. Um, uh, the Greek Hi, economic Victor. crisis is long gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I take it you, you, you did a bit of shopping and, uh, you know, sightseeing. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not the best. I'm not the best tourist for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it looks like uh, Greece, uh, uh, Greece is that that crisis is not over just yet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, honestly, like seems like uh, tourism is coming back to yeah uh, southern Europe. So that's that's uh, certainly something positive for. Uh, and and did, did for you the have to as a whole. Yeah, did you have to self isolate when you got there or? Or not really. Uh, sorry, to what? To to self isolate because of uh, COVID. Oh and, no no yeah. no no no. Yeah. We okay. uh, anyone with a vaccine is basically uh, yeah. free to go. So so this is going to be a very important um, time for for the eurozone economies, and um, we are going to start the webinar just just on the side note, because obviously it's the summer month and. So much relies on, um, you know, people going uh, on holidays um, to spend. Travel and tourism is going to be really important in the next couple of months, and this is part of the reason we're seeing oil prices, for example, staying relatively high um, because of ongoing ex expectations that demand is going to be strong. Uh, due to uh, travel restrictions being eased and people going on holiday and whatnot. Um, likewise, um, equity indices um, across the Western world, you know, in, in, in Eurozone and in the US have remained elevated because of um, optimism that um, the, the worst of the crisis is over, despite, uh, you know, new variants uh, of the virus emerging uh, here and there. Um, UK COVID cases have been falling for the last uh, several days providing a further boost to, to sentiment. But, you know, Chinese markets have been selling off. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute or so. Uh, but that's not related to, to COVID at all. Um, so welcome to today's webinar. My name is Fahad Razak Zara. We are going to be talking mainly about technical analysis on live charts. For those of you who have joined us live, um, you know, welcome. And those of you who are watching this on YouTube, uh, please consider joining us live next time because we will be talking uh, live, obviously, and um, it, you know, provide you the opportunity to ask us questions on any markets that uh, interest you. So, uh, yeah, consider joining us live next time. And this webinar repeats every Tuesday, uh, same time, 11:30 uh, London time. Um, so before we begin the webinar, please uh, have a read through the risk warning. These webinars are for general information only. Uh, they are not intended to provide trading or investment advice, okay? We don't um, provide personal recommendations either. Any information related to past performance of an investment does not guarantee future performance. Think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur, either directly or indirectly, arising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that uh, spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. Now, uh, you may hear from the background noise, um, we have returned to the office um, in London. And uh, so I do apologize for any background noise that you may hear. Uh, this webinar is, um, as I said, repeats every Tuesday. Um, and we do touch on fundamental uh, analysis as well. Uh, especially with, with, with the help of Victor, who um, is more of a macro analyst than myself. We have questions um, and answers session um, towards the end of the webinar, but please feel free to ask us questions during the webinar. Like if we talk about some market, feel free to um, type your questions in the chat box. So this week, um, before we go into the chart, um, just a quick um, summary of, of uh, what to look out for. Um, so we have uh, big technology companies reporting their results tonight. Apple, Microsoft, um, and Google all reporting after the closing bell, AMD as well. Um, yesterday we had Tesla. Um, we have um, Facebook uh, from the US um, on Wednesday, Amazon on Thursday. Um, as well as that, we have some UK uh, related stocks as well, like Barclays, uh, Lloyds, um, NatWest reporting on Friday. Um, 
on a macro level, the most important event um, in the next couple of days will be the FOMC statement, I think, and press conference. Um, obviously, the Fed is not expected to make any changes in this uh, uh, meeting. However, discussions over uh, tapering will dominate the agenda as well as um, inflation uh, uh, you know, topics uh, that will be discussed in detail as well, I, I would imagine, by the uh, people, um, ask, you know, fr from journalists asking um, Jay Powell uh, at the press conference. Um, other macro events for the week include uh, CPI estimates from Germany um, and Eurozone. We have GDP uh, estimate from Eurozone as well, uh, as well as some um, European countries like France, Germany, Spain. Um, Canadian GDP is on Friday. Uh, I think this particular um, uh, data, the core PC price index, which will be released on Friday, is going to garner some attention because it is the Fed's favorite measure of inflation. And, um, you know, it could potentially revive concerns about uh, runaway prices if this comes in really strong. But obviously, before that, we, we have the FOMC meeting, and I'm 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 almost certain that um, Jay Powell will be, um, you know, typically quite dovish and um, dismiss um, concerns over inflation. Once again, uh, well, uh, how to support yeah, the market. this this has been going on uh, over the past uh, half a year. However. Yeah. Uh, that said, uh, last time uh, the market was kind of surprised about the hawkish, hawkishness from the FOMC. Yeah. And I wouldn't expect them to turn any less hawkish uh, yeah. at this meeting because they don't want to flip flop like. No, 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 of course. Uh, yeah. So, so basically, um, there is a, a, a pretty good uh, deal of uh, a certainty that uh, the uh, result from FOMC's meeting tomorrow is going to uh, bring us closer to uh, getting a signal from the Fed on when they might starting yeah. to taper their bond purchases, especially considering record rising uh, house prices in the US. Yeah. And yesterday's data uh, from uh, um, about new home sales, which uh, hit the wires. And basically, it was something uh, significantly, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. significantly worse than expected, like dramatically worse yeah. than expected, to be honest. So uh, um, the, the ho home buyer sentiment is uh, dropping like a rock. Yeah. Because prices are skyrocketing, so we're going to need uh, to have a resolution to this uh, yeah. issue here. And politicians have started um, blaming the Fed already. So yeah. they might have to do something about this very shortly. Uh, Existing uh, home sales also come in uh, usually in the same week, but I don't think, uh, I think we may have had that last week. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a quite quite a mess, wasn't it? And and the trend has been, um, you know, yeah, downwards, the, hasn't the, it, the, uh, the, the last few months? The trend has been uh, consistently lower. Uh, there is no shortage of supply in the market. There is about yeah. six months uh, worth of supply, yeah. which is uh, quite fine, but uh, you know, it's the, the, these numbers are not pandemic related. Uh, yeah. Well, in a way, they are uh, <laughs> because prices have skyrocketed just as everyone started. Yeah, look, look at this. The, this is the house price index from the US um, above forecast. These uh, orange dots are where expectations were, but over the last several months, you can see that house prices have come in consistently above expectations. Uh, with ex ex exception of one or two months over here, but yeah. um, overall it's been rising rapidly. House price; these are month over month uh, um, changes, Figures. by the way. Yeah. So um, over oh, year over year, that's going to be significant, isn't it? If you add all of these up, um, yeah. Uh, and and it's not just a U.S. Uh, story. Uh, house prices have been rising rapidly in the U.K. as well. 
albeit for, for different reasons here. We had the stamp duty holiday, um, uh, which has kind of expired. Um, still, yeah. your home buyers are getting some discount, but not as much as they did uh, before June. Uh, and that led to people rushing to to purchase their uh, homes when um, stamp duty was um, was considerably low. Um, but um, yeah, uh, this is something to keep an eye on. Um, things are costing a lot more than they did a, a year ago. Um, and um, it's not just house prices, uh, it's, it's, it's everything really. But despite that, the Fed continues to think that inflation is going to be temporary. And um, well, to, to some degree it, it will be because it will come out of equation, right? From the, you know, if you look at it, some the change of price of something uh, comparing it to a 12 month ago period, it is going to fall out of equation, but it doesn't mean that it's not gonna, it doesn't mean it's gonna go down, right? It, it just means that it's not gonna go up by the same rate. Um, now, um, in terms of the markets then, uh, should we start with the dollar index? Sure. Yeah, um, this is the weekly chart of the dollar index. Um, and on the weekly, uh, the dollar index has been printing pretty much um, continued bullish price action. And this is, um, this has been really in response to um, data coming out strong from the US uh, with investors expecting the Federal Reserve to be the first major central bank to taper bond purchases um, compared to, for example, uh, the European Central Bank. Um, the ECB um, met uh, last week and President Lagarde made it crystal clear that um, the um, emergency stimulus measures in the Eurozone will not be reduced anytime soon. In fact, the ECB has now changed its inflation um, target before it was close to, but below 2%. Now they are targeting 2% symmetrical inflation. Um, they are allowing inflation to rise above 2% um, for a while, um, like the Fed has done, uh, which means that um, the current loose monetary policy stance will remain in place even if inflation overshoots, which it probably will do uh, as per the ECB itself uh, over the coming months. Uh, but the ECB is not going to um, alter its monetary policy uh, because of um, what it thinks will be a temporary rise above 2% in um, inflation. Um, in other words, the euro should remain under pressure uh, against weaker currencies, um, at least fundamentally speaking. But how much of that's priced in already? That's, that's the big unknown, of course. Um, on the daily chart, um, sorry, this is not the weekly anymore. Uh, let me just daily. <clears throat> so on the daily chart, um, the dollar is um, trying to break through this trend line. It uh, has consolidated here uh, after breaking above it. Um, you know, it's, it's no surprise to, to see it hesitate here with the uh, FOMC meeting uh, coming up tomorrow. Um, perhaps investors are waiting to see if the Fed is going to really turn hawkish or, you know, talk talk down the prospects of early taper. Um, and depending on the outcome of the FOMC meeting, we could see a nice move uh, up or indeed down in the dollar yeah. index. Um, by the looks of it, it's um, it's more likely up than down because of the euro being weak. Um, but uh, it's not, you know, it's not just the euro that determines the dollar index. Yeah, it's... there is a, a bigger factor at play, especially uh, after yesterday and this morning. Uh, yeah. The Chinese market is experiencing yeah. some significant stress. Yeah. And there is uh, definitely a huge amount of uh, uh, risk outflow uh, yeah. from China after the latest bout of uh, regulatory action against uh, tech companies in the country yeah. and the resulting uncertainty overall for investors in the Chinese market, which don't feel protected as they shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, nobody <laughs> nobody yeah. in the Chinese government uh, cares about how much losses uh, investors are going to suffer uh, yeah. if they're cracked down on big tech in the country continues so they keep on going and uh, 
the the market has like uh, portions of the market have um, declined dramatically over the past couple of days. As we yeah, see. as you can we see, we dropped yeah. uh, uh, in the past three sessions. We lost uh, um, almost two big figures. Uh, well, we can see exactly how much we we we, we lost um, in the last three sessions. Yeah. 12%. Over 10%, yeah. over 10%. Yeah. Well, if you look at the closing price, way yeah. over 10%. Way over 10%. Yeah. So, uh, we, we're, uh, the, the, the dollar is definitely getting a boost from this uh, as uh, the Chinese yuan rallied uh, half a percent. Uh, sorry, the, the dropped uh, the dollar rallied against uh, the Chinese yuan about half a percent today. Um, where is that? Just at, at, on the second one from the top. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, this one. Um, yeah. ju just on a side note, though, the uh, dollar index is, um, although obviously it's impacted by foreign currencies, the Chinese yuan is not included in the dollar it index calculations. Yeah. No. Uh, um, but yeah, this is something that is uh, generally impacted, uh, is impacting risk sentiment, which is, as we know, is uh, usually positive uh, for, for the dollar as uh, um, when investors pull out money uh, in a foreign currency, they tend to, um, you know, uh, switch it back into dollars. So indeed, indeed. a lot of those investors are uh, dollar centric. So, yeah. Um, one thing, though, the, the, the sell off in the Chinese equity markets um, has been uh, contained to lo local markets. So if I go back to the Chinese market, uh, where has it gone? Uh, where's China? There you go. Um, so yeah, obviously Hong Kong has been affected as well. Um, big drop there, 61.8%. The index has given up uh, more than 50% of its gains made post the um, low. Yeah, for low. now this is contained. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, um, but you know, if you look, at if you look point at, in time, sure. if you look at the German uh, DAX index, for example, which is generally more um, sensitive to China, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not near all time highs. It had this kind of sharp drop this morning. It yeah. did manage to reverse it. That it did recover a little bit of the lows. Yeah. Um, so far, it's holding its own re relatively well. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it is uh, definitely something to 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 w keep an eye on. It's just that it, it's uh, it, it's a local thing, uh, really. Um, the, the government's crackdown on, Ch on Chinese uh, technology stocks. It's not something global like pan the pandemic or, or, or uh, something that's um, going to um, affect the global economy, um, which is one reason I would caution a, uh, uh, caution with because because you don't want to be going, uh, you don't want to be turning too negative just because of that on the global markets. Sure. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, we could take, see some explosions on a case by case basis. Indeed. However, have it in mind that it's happening in the background, and yeah. uh, alongside the stock market, the the bond market has also started suffering uh, this morning in China, which is uh, something uh, to to. Don't know if to, I have the Chinese be, to be worried about. Uh, yeah. Don't think they're very oh there you go. traded, but yeah. Well, yeah, it's not very well traded. <laughs> um, yeah. So yields have come down. Uh, bond prices have risen in in, in China, apparently, um, suggesting that there's been some haven flows into the relative safety of the government bonds. And um, similar picture as well in, in the U.S. This is the 10-year U.S. yields. Uh, yields have been falling in recent days, um, not just in, in the U.S., but also in Germany, which means that people have been going back into bonds um, because of, well, two reasons. Firstly, because central banks of Europe and the U.S., especially, especially Europe, uh, the European Central Bank, um, they have uh, indicated that um, they will continue purchasing bonds. So people are front-running the ECB, causing the yields to go down. And um, the U.S. Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, has said that um, they're not going to um, 
reduce uh, purchases, bond purchases um, immediately. They, they may well uh, prepare the markets um, in the coming months, but it's not going to be an immediate, immediate um, taper, which is why yields have gone down. Um, anyway, th- this should be positive news for gold, uh, right, uh, um, Victor? Well, the yields technically they should be. <laughs> However, gold has started to struggle in recent yeah. sessions. And it's, uh, why is this? Actually... I mean, um, really, it's, it's, it's probably I... a, a dollar story rather than yields, right? Uh, because when the dollar yeah. goes up, gold being a, a, a buck denominated asset. But then if you look at gold in, in euro terms, uh, let's have a look. Uh, I don't know if he gold euro. Uh, I don't know if, if they will have it here. Oh, yeah, there yeah. you go, gold euro. Yeah. Okay. Well, See, gold uh, is struggling against the euro as well, which is really yeah, odd. Yeah. You, well, the euro has uh, been really weak. Um, why? How? How would you explain this? Uh, Victor. Well, well, I I think that uh, we're we're entering into this phase of the cycle where um, uh, safe haven investors are starting yeah. to uh, look into riskier assets. So, yeah. uh, uh, holding gold for uh, very long periods of time, mm. it's uh, it has been very profitable. However. Yeah, uh, holding all at the top of the range, uh, which we have uh, uh, been trading in uh, yeah. since uh, 2011. Uh, well, yeah. that's not that popular. If you switch over to the my favorite uh, monthly chart, <laughs> you see this uh, enormous, ginormous double top uh, forming, and yeah, we we don't seem to have broken out of it. Um, so. If you were buying at uh, in the low uh, 1200s and 1300s and even above, like you need to take some profits at some point uh, mm. when when it took less than um, well two years to for you for your uh, position to rally yeah. um, almost 50 percent. So yeah, I I don't think there is enough demand at these levels. Uh, to for for gold to continue pushing uh, higher, and I don't think that this is related to um, uh, to to having uh, well, people don't need this safe haven at this point. At this yeah. moment, it's just that there is so much liquidity flowing around. Yeah. Uh, but like, so so why do you need this uh, to 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 park your money in something super safe like gold? Mm. You, you'd rather be looking at risk uh, assets and that's what the majority of uh, capital is doing, has been doing over the past uh, uh, several months with US equities. and Especially the, the ultimate, technology uh, sector. <laughs> the, yeah. the ultimate powerhouse there, the NASDAQ. Yeah. This is what NASDAQ 100 uh, it just keeps on going and going and going. It's relentless. And with technology companies reporting today, um, you know, Apple, Microsoft, AMD, Alphabet, all after the bill. Um, yeah, those earnings see... are well, very solid, uh, have yeah. been very solid throughout all this time of uncertainty. And Look at Apple. This, this is this, Apple. These are... These are the new safe havens uh, yeah. because you we you, you're not gonna get rid of your phone tomorrow. Just whatever happens, you're not gonna yeah. throw out your phone. So, yeah, this is something that wow, look is at sort of a structural uh, structural shift in the market with yeah. uh, all these big tech companies charging ahead. Keep they keep uh, marking new highs and. It's it's uh, the only way this stops is uh, through regulatory action, in my view, and eventually it's going to come, but nobody uh, is willing to bet that it's going to be anytime soon, just because we are all, uh, including politicians, they're so dependent on the uh, um, on the well-being Microsoft. of these companies. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, regulatory um, 
concerns potentially ending this uh, trend. But um, I think also uh, tapering from the Fed might might impact the the rally as well because once uh, bond yields start going up again, you know, remember that well, technology stocks are um, you know growth stocks that have low dividend yields, right? Yeah. So well, uh, uh, the Fed itself might not, uh, but yeah. I would say like the, the the inflation picture definitely will. Sure, sure. Impact uh, growth stocks. Uh, so maybe maybe when when the, when uh, funds start to come out of these um, stocks, maybe then we will see uh, flows into uh, gold and silver, perhaps. But uh, it's a long shot. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like that's the case right maybe no. maybe it will change in the future in the near future but right now you know even silver's struggling uh, i was expecting it to to really take off by now um but it hasn't no nope, um, the only uh, heavy metal that is uh, <laughs> yeah uh, pushing higher is copper that's something that's been so unreal. that's ri- risk risk as well isn't it risk risk on uh, yeah reflecting risk uh, on sentiment yeah, there is this uh, falling wedge on 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 silver that uh, could play out, which is meant to be a bullish continuation pattern, but it's below the 200 day, so we need to see a breakout above. Um, you mentioned copper. Let's have a look at copper. Yeah, every time it steps, it's been bought. Um, it is uh, around this resistance area right here, but but the way it's looking, it uh, might just continue pushing onwards and upwards from here. Who knows? Um, let's go back to the currency market, shall we? And, um, you know, we, we talked about the dollar index, but we didn't really go um, and look into the euro that much. And the euro is really struggling as it um, tries to hold um, this bullish trend line. It's not doing a great job at that. <laughs> um, where do you see the euro, uh, Victor, from here? So <laughs> at this point in time, I'm not making any calls, but uh, for, for, you know me, like I've been, uh, right. bullish You've been on the dollar. On yeah. I've been bullish on the dollar for a while. I, I don't see any reason to be shifting my position from a fundamental standpoint. Yeah. The US economy keeps recovering uh, quicker than the European economy. And generally, uh, Knowing how Europeans act and how Americans act uh, in this situation, I would be, <laughs> I would be uh, putting my bets on on the U.S. just because uh, yeah. people uh, across the Atlantic don't seem to care much about uh, anything. They just want to live their lives. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, uh, isn't that uh, a little bit is, is, is stereotypical? <laughs> well, you guys are the same. Uh, you you have uh, removed all your um, um, restrictions in the UK, yeah. and we in continental Europe, uh, we are kind of fearful we had to do something like that. So. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, Actually, the, the UK government, uh, the the UK government has been quite conservative when it came to removing restrictions. They only did that because of the actions they took previously, which were really bold actions. You know, they went into another lockdown in January, in December, I think it was, and um, that allowed you know virus cases to fall dramatically. And then, meanwhile, uh, vaccinations. Um, run um continue to rise uh the the the, the uh, pace of vaccinations and that yeah, allowed the Europe, government to fully uh, appears to be uh yeah catching up uh, today i read yeah. an article that uh, spain appears now to be uh, the country that has yeah. the most vaccinated uh, population in would Europe. you would you not then argue that the euro could find support um on the back of increased demand for t- travel and tourism um, and and other uh, well, sectors. If we, if, we of... if we weren't in the midst of uh, uh, August, I, yeah. <laughs> mm. I would. But like at this point in time, I uh, knowing how people make plans uh, yeah. way ahead uh, yeah. of uh, uh, of their travel time, I don't think that we're going to see. Mm. Um, the best of the recovery this this year so fair enough fair enough 
Um, and that's, um, you know, the euro weakness is uh, reflected elsewhere as well. And more, m- m- you know, more significantly against the stronger currency like the pound. The pound has been relatively stronger than the euro. Um, this is a really yeah. untidy chart. Let me just remove everything. Remove drawing. Um, if you look at the, let's go to the weekly chart of the euro. This is the... Yeah, yeah. Very it's, nice it's, looking. Um, yeah, this this candle, candle. last week was yeah. uh, kind of the, uh, the the line in the sand uh, has been uh, drawn, and yeah. uh, from here on out, I I would be very surprised if the euro staged uh, a, a rally above yeah. that uh, previous high that yeah. uh, was set last week. So it, it looks like um, the euro pound bears are now targeting liquidity below this thrust scandal. Remember this uh, big bullish weekly candle was formed uh, several weeks ago. Since then, um, you know, if this was a genuine reversal, um, what we could have, we should have seen was uh, a few weeks uh, at most of consolidation and then a break out. We didn't see that instead. Yeah, uh, we saw this it was very tight lower. range. Yeah. And... and then we, we had one final uh, attempt to, to break out above uh, short-term resistance in the 86.25 area uh, last yeah. week, but then it failed. So it, it looks quite heavy, um, as Victor mentioned, and I wouldn't be surprised that um, uh, to, to see the euro um, pound break down below 84.72 next, ahead of... Yeah. Uh, ahead of 82.77 thereafter, um, which is the next um, low that was created so, some, some time uh, ago. W- what about the, uh, the the euro against the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc? Yeah, um, the euro yen uh, is looking uh, weak as well. I mean, um, it, last it week paused, it, 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 it posted uh, a hammer candle, decline, but, yeah. Yeah, but then um, it, it's, it's failing to hold above the previous previous week's high as you yeah. can see by this weekly uh, week. And if you go to the daily chart, um, you know, it, there is a trend line as well if you draw it from these uh, highs. Um, yeah. Something like that. I'm, you know. um, but more to the point, that this is the level that, that uh, I was very interested in um, seeing if it uh, holds or breaks. And so far, it, it's, it's uh, holding uh, below this area of uh, resistance, which was previously support. So if I put a box around this area, you'll see it more clearly. This zone right here. Um, previously, it was resistance, resistance. Res- we, we finally broke above it, came down, retest, held, bounced, and then we started to break below it here. And then uh, we had a dead cat bounce um, and then uh, a clean break below. And now we are yeah. retesting this zone from underneath and so far offering resistance. So um, this, this shaded region is, is key. For as long as we remain below, uh, ideally, be, you know, from a bearish point of view, you, you want to see this 130.29 level, 130.30 level, the previous week's high, not to be taken out now because that's where the sellers have, um, the buyers have uh, been trapped by the looks of things because last week, remember, we had this uh, hammer candle. We edged above the high of that candle at the start of this week. And now price has been slammed back down. So if you're bearish on the euro yen, you don't want price to go back above the 130.30 level. Um, All right. So yeah. uh, what about the euro Swiss? Uh, do we have, do, do we see any hope uh, for euro bulls there? No, not either. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't lo- look as um, though that's going to be the case. Uh, you know, the, no. the long-term trend line has been taken out on the euro uh, Swiss this level, um, this trend line that was, oops, what have I done, what have I done? Okay, let's just leave it like it was. <laughs> um, we also below the um, high that was hit uh, last year in 2022, uh, sorry, 2020. Um, and this shaded region was previously resistance. We broke above it, price bounced from here. It served as support and now, um, it and has now been it's broken. So yeah, the so way lower is clear. Yeah, yeah. So, all told, it looks like um, we're looking at weakness for the euro uh, across the board. Um, yeah. uh, but in this case, uh, if, if you're bullish for uh, whatever reason, then maybe wait for price to break above this uh, bearish trend line before potentially looking to engage on the long side. Or if you see uh, a key reversal pattern around, um, around the current levels, I would say, around this zone, 
somewhere around here. Um, if you see a, a, a hammer like candle or something that would tell you that, you know, we've seen a low in despair, uh, but it has to come in around this area somewhere because this is where price previously took off from. You don't want to see price go below this zone, zone now because if it does that, then it will only increase the um, bearish momentum, I would say. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's the situation with the euro. Let's talk about the pound uh, very briefly because, um, yeah. you know, we... Um, Let's talk about cable. It's, cable. Uh, like uh, it managed to bounce uh, and close above uh, the mm. weekly support line at uh, 37, so, sorry, 36 something uh, last week. 36, uh, uh, this, this level right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 36.70-ish, uh, that's, that's where uh, the line in the sand was for, yeah. uh, for the bulls to retain control of the situation on this, uh, uh, in this currency pair. And yeah. they managed to regain that level despite losing it on Monday or mm. Tuesday, if I'm not It's mistaken. not, I, I don't think it's out of the woods yet, though. But um, like, yeah, like, no, like the um, not out Euro, of the yet. yeah. Uh, we have this... Uh, resistance uh, uh, around 38 uh, playing in and uh, yeah the, the between 38 to 39 is, yeah yeah it's it's uh, consolidating at these levels and uh, yeah. we're, we're seeing some uh, um, potential for another retest of the downside yeah. and uh, uh, assuming that uh, gets uh, well, well assuming we, we get uh, another bout of strength from yeah. uh, <clears throat> Uh, for the U.S. dollar from the Federal Reserve, uh, we we might see uh, levels uh, that uh, to to test uh, year this year's lows. Yeah, yeah. Around uh, one thirty-five ish and below. I, I want and to explain why I, I I draw these shaded boxes. Some you know sometimes it might it may be clear to some, but it might not be to others. Um, in this case, if if you observe weekly price action, you know we had this high here. And then we had this breakout. This was the last downward move in the on the weekly time frame before price staged a uh, breakout attempt. And eventually it, it tagged the high momentarily moving above that high before breaking down. Eventually it broke the low, the low that was created prior to that big move up. And then last week we had a lower low below here. So um, although this may look bullish and it you know, it could turn out to be a, a, a key reversal pattern, um, depending on the outcome of FOMC and, and whatnot. Um, from a purely technical point of view, um, it is um, the reason I've, 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 I'm a bit hesitant to, to call this a bullish reversal just yet is because this shaded region that I've, I've drawn is uh, marks a key resistance range for the market because this is where pre previously people are buying. And then once it starts to break down and we move below, this area is now going to be potentially turning into resistance, and and so far that's 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 that looks like it's going to be the case. So on the weekly time frame, if you're bearish on the on the cable, what you want to see is for price to go back below last week's high, because last week it created this uh, hammer-like candle, which appears bullish. But if we start to hold below, um, that would indicate that the people who bought at resistance they will have been trapped. And if that's the case, then price may make a quick move to take out liquidity that would be resting below previous week's low, therefore targeting the 135 level next. So that's the situation I'm looking for uh, from a bearish point of view. Can we go back below previous week's high? Can we hold below it? If so, then it's very likely that we may take out the previous week's low next. Um, let's move into the daily time frame to study price action in greater detail. Um, on this time frame, the first thing I want to do is draw the um, trend line connecting the highs. Um, and what, what you want to see now, uh, if you're bullish, um, the pound is um, is you, you want to see this trend line broken first and foremost on a daily closing basis, right? Because it hasn't done that previously. Um, but more to the point, I want to see price make a higher high. The most recent high comes in right here at 139.10. A move above that level would invalidate any short-term bearish 
um, structures that may still be um, in play. Um, so if you're bullish, um, you want to see a move above that level, then what you could do is um, you could look to uh, potentially buy any rounded retest of this level um, in the future if it breaks higher. But um, right now it's uh, in no man's land. It could literally go either direction. Um, and we have lots of uh, macroeconomic events happening this week, uh, most notably the FOMC uh, policy decision, which could determine the direction, not only for the cable, but for all the other US major currency pairs, US dollar, I should say. Um, so yeah, um, if you're looking to trade this uh, short, Possibly um, the trigger could be if we move below the low of this uh, red candle or black in this case, which um, was created prior to price making a breakout attempt above this high, last week's high. So this low comes in at 137.20 and it ties in with a 200 day moving average. A potential move below that would be, um, in, in my eyes, it, it would be a, a bearish reversal signal. So that's the line in the sand in so far as the cable is concerned. Um, Good stuff. So uh, let's uh, have a quick look at commodity currencies uh, before yeah. we move on to uh, indices and uh, oil. Yeah. Um, so with, with risk of sentiment in, in China, um, well, with risk sentiment getting hurt in China, um, this is reflected in the New Zealand dollar weakening. Um, yeah, it has been actually uh, quite range bound uh, between yeah. 69 and 70 over the past uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, and we had a brief showing above uh, 70, uh, the 70 area uh, after the bank, the, the Royal Bank of New Zealand uh, signaled uh, its intentions to um, start the Reserve uh, Bank of New Zealand. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, to to. Um, uh, basically, um, uh, to reverse its uh, hiking yeah. cycle, uh, sorry, tightening cycle. Tightening. So, um, yeah, this is something that uh, uh, played well for a couple of sessions, and the, the, the New Zealand dollar was very well supported. However, yeah. after that, uh, it, it, it lost its uh, mojo again. And, yeah. Uh, it keeps consolidating below seventy. Yeah. This is this this is the thing with with all the major currency pairs right now. It's 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 we, we're not seeing any follow through, any real follow through at all. Typical July man. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's People very typical of summer holiday. Yeah, <laughs> it's um. They don't want you know, to place a big bet on the New Zealand dollar yeah. right now. Oh, any other market for that matter. Or any um, other one, yeah. The Aussie New Zealand. Um, it's testing support right here at um, 105.50 ish and it's bounce, bouncing back. Um, so, this particular market may um, maybe want to watch, you know, if, you, if you're playing, playing the ranges, um, you know, this level was previously resistance, turned into support on a couple of occasions, it's bouncing again here. Um, yeah. But look at the, uh, looking at the, so this would point to, at performance for the Aussie dollar, right? If you're a bullish uh, commodity dollars, then you'd want to concentrate on the Aussie dollar because of the, the, the fact that the um, Aussie Kiwi is testing support. Obviously, if support... Yeah. yeah. Uh, however, uh, same, same picture with the Kiwi. The Aussie is not doing much at all. Uh, at these levels. Well, yeah, it, has, uh, it, it, it was hitting uh, new lows for a couple of weeks and yeah. it, it paused uh, uh, in the beginning of this week. Uh, so yeah. let's see what happens. But uh, obviously the market is waiting for um, a little bit of clues from the Fed tomorrow. I, yeah. I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't uh, expect uh, those clues to be much different from what they said uh, the last time. So yeah. a resumption of the rally uh, in the dollar is, is, is quite possible in my view. Yeah. In the, um, in the uh, US dollar. In the US dollar, Just yes. to be clear, yeah. Um, 
an another hammer like or in this case doji long legged like doji on the Aussie dollar against the Japanese yen, but no follow through on the upside yet. Um, we would only turn bullish if it holds above last week's high. Um, even if it's testing support right at um, right here at around 80 ish. So consolidation is the name of the game in FX, um, uh, which is, as Victor mentioned, typical of uh, July price action, but uh, also we, we've got um, FOMC, um, which means people are not really committing to one or the other direction at the moment. Um, let's have a look at cryptocurrencies uh, very briefly because Bitcoin uh, has had a real, uh, you know, had a nice comeback um, this week um, or on the last several days, and um, only for a price to be slapped back down yesterday because. Um, what was the trigger for the for, for, for the reversal? It was um, Amazon denying reports that it is accepted. Yeah, it's I was very uh, yeah. surprised at those reports to begin with. Uh, yeah. But, you know, uh, speculators, especially in yeah. unregulated markets, are yeah. going to be very creative in coming up with yeah. non-existing stories. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a rebuff from Amazon that... Uh, this is not the direction they're looking into. And yeah. you, you, you can imagine they're not looking into because uh, they're already in the uh, crosshairs of the regulators of politicians yeah. uh, with, uh, um, uh, with their dominant uh, market position. So what happens if they say, uh, yeah, we're so excited about cryptocurrency, <laughs> uh, screw the government. Yeah, this is uh, really where the direction that we need to go on. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine this to result in anything good <laughs> for this company. So absolutely uh, not. They had yeah. to come out with uh, an official uh, uh, re re rebuttal of this story and yeah. uh, basically said that uh, uh, no, we're not really into looking into cryptocurrencies at this point in time. So yeah. Um, it um, from a purely technical point of view, though, uh, it's uh, it's positive to see Bitcoin holding support at thirty six thousand six hundred ish, which was previously resistance right here. Yeah, um, that's a positive sign. And also yesterday it closed in the black, um, even though it came sharply off the highs. Um, longer term, this key uh, area of resistance around forty thousand, the shaded region is going to be key. Uh, we need to see price of Bitcoin break above this area decisively uh, before one can confidently turn positive on the uh, cryptocurrency. For now, um, it remains range band, um, but short-term bias has been bullish given the positive closes that we've seen in the last several days. So the, the bias is certainly bullish in the short-term timeframe. On the longer term uh, time frame, uh, we need to see confirmation and a break above this region is needed to tip the balance back into the bull's favor. Yeah, I would be looking at uh, 42,000 level and 44,000 level as key levels. Uh, yeah. Uh, for Bitcoin, basically, that's somewhere. Uh, somewhere where I would be more confident, but although, you know, uh, Bitcoin and confidence don't really, um, <laughs> don't really uh, fit into the same sentence in my so, galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Ethereum is looking um, constructive. It is holding um, above the 200-day two, the moving average now. Okay, so things are starting to look positive once again uh we uh have taken out sorry it's not this one trend line um we have um taken out this trend line and we are holding above the um on you know price came back to retest the trend and it bounced today so so far it's looking good um but yeah just just be careful because if, if Bitcoin starts to drift lower, then it's going to pull this with it, I think. But um, so far, it's looking 
it's positive that you know it's, it's broken out of this triangle pattern to the upside can it now hold above if it can't then we may see uh cryptos uh, e ethereum and other cryptos come back strongly in the days ahead so watch them pri uh, watch them closely now then i cannot see any questions from the people who have joined us today um, if you have any questions, uh, please ask us uh, before we end the webinar. While we wait for your questions, are there any markets that uh, you wanted to cover in particular, Victor? Yeah, let's have a look at oil. Uh, it has uh, bounced back up nicely yeah. uh, from last week's low. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, very uh, swift recovery that we're seeing. And, Back to resistance. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, right at 75 um, on, on the Brent contract. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you why this, I think this is a key resistance area because if you look at the monthly time frame, um, Yeah, it was uh, the previous... Uh, yeah previous high in 2019 i guess well yeah um in um this is the monthly chart so so this goes back quite a while um 2008 yeah yeah uh, 2000, i'm just saying uh, yeah yeah that the trend line coupled with the 2019 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. high uh, 2018 which... yeah uh, oh sorry this is the 2018 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. This, okay yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's uh, the, the the kind of the same area. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, we 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 have been uh, uh, rallying uh, for uh, a year and three months. Yeah. Something like that. So, um, how much further can we, this rally go? Especially considering the fact that. Uh, some uh, emerging markets are feeling the pain from yeah. uh, higher fuel costs and their economies are not uh, as resilient as uh, those in the West in terms of fiscal measures. Yeah. So prices, high, high, higher gas prices are impacting uh, consumers in a much, much more violent way. So yeah. people are really uh, disgruntled with uh, these high prices for fuel. And uh, OPEC uh, mentioned it. Uh, well, the, the, um, the United Arab Emirates mentioned it at their last uh, meeting that they don't see the market being able to, to, to handle these prices. So uh, this is why they... Uh, kept arguing that they need, they want to increase their quotas and pump out more oil. So uh, let's look at the uh, WTI then. Yeah, let's sure. Picture uh, any any different there? Uh, let's have a look. Why is it not loading? Oh, sorry, I'm clicking on the UK oil. Like, um, not really, this similar picture. Um, yeah. Although on the monthly time frame, obviously it looks different because it's already taken out the long-term uh, bearish trend line, but then it, it went into negative. So, um, unlike yeah. Brent, yeah, um, let's not, you know, get, do well on that trend line break too much um, and concentrate on um, price action. And, and, you know, like Brent, it, it formed this hammer candle last week, which is supposed to be bullish. Um, so, but can also be a bull trap. <laughs> it can also be a bull trap. And that's exactly what we're looking for here because um, as prices test long-term resistance levels and um, and given the macro concerns about the sustainability of demand and uh, rising supply and whatnot, it's... Uh... By the way, look at how uh, oil bounced um, right at support here. This was a 2020 high, previously resistance. Resistance, resistance. We broke out, and it fell to test that level, and it bounced. So this could well be just a technical bounce rather than something driven by fundamentals. Um, so what we we're looking for now is, can it hold above or go back below the previous week's high? So far, 
is in indecision. The current week shows a incomplete doji candle. Yeah. Um, well, there is, is uh, four more days of this week. So left, yeah. So it, it is testing resistance. Um, so I, I would say the risks are skewed to the downside from here for oil prices. I'm going to make a bold call here. <laughs> could be, could very well turn out to be wrong, but you know, this shaded region, um, once again, let me explain. Um, this was the last down move before prices made this last up move, which ultimately failed as prices then broke below that low. Then we got a clean break. Now we're retesting that zone again. So for any trapped longs, this is possibly the time to come out, maybe. Um, and uh, so we may see some downward pressure on, on oil prices. But equally, I'm, I'm surprised that after this big down move, um, you know, on 19th of July, we didn't see any downside follow through. So perhaps what we may see is, is a, a small retracement, which may well have already happened this week. I don't know. You know, on Monday, we, we pulled back a little bit, then went back higher. Um, then stabilized, yeah. Yeah, then it stabilized. So that move could, could well have already been done. I don't, you know, who knows? Uh, but the rest are that we could see another phase of weakness from here. Um, so rather than guessing if it does turn lower from here, uh, you know, if you're trading crude oil, uh, or short or long, um, what you want to see now is, is confirmation. So one way to confirm would be to keep an eye on price on the daily or uh, lower time frames. And if we break below, for example, the previous day's low and hold below, then that would be a confirmation that perhaps the sellers are edging, edging it when it comes to um, near term control of price action. So if, if oil goes below 70, 60, then um, that could be the trigger that I am uh, looking for uh, in, in terms of bearish price action. Uh, from a bullish point of view, um, a move above the shaded region is going to clear further hurdles, but uh, it will make it progressively difficult to justify buying oil at at those levels as well because um, of how high prices have come and fundamentals haven't changed much in the last few weeks. If anything, um, you know, with the OPEC's um, new policy of bringing back more supply than expected. Um, fundamentally, um, you know, oil prices are going to struggle to rise significantly further from here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's about it uh, yeah. from, from us today. We didn't have any questions from uh, our listeners. Um, yeah. We wish you a very successful trading week. Uh, good luck. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, speak to you again soon next week. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, please make sure to join us again next week. Uh, oh, by the way, talking of which, we, we do have um, more webinars coming up, um, different types of webinars. So if you go to our website, thinkmarkets.com, um, go to the uh, webinars page, you will see that um, this is today's webinar. We have uh, the same webinar um, happening on 3rd of August, next Tuesday. And then we have the non from payrolls webinar on Friday of next week. Make sure to join us for both of those. Um, thank you so much. And um, I hope to see you guys there. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.